Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. I am super excited to continue our new series on equations that change web handling forever. Last week, we showed a simple and most widely used winding equation. In this show, we give examples of winding equations that you will not likely use, but you should nonetheless know about. No worries, kiddos. I'm going to make this as painless as possible. Winding machines have been around for more than a century, and our understanding of them has steadily improved. The first useful understanding was learned around World War I. That is, rolls should be wound neither too tight nor too loose. The paper industry used the metric and word hardness as a synonym for tightness. While much has been learned in a century since, even including about two dozen PhD theses in winding, none of what we have learned since has changed the correctness and utility of this fundamental guideline. The second stage of evolution was around World War II. That is, roles should be tighter at the core than at the outside. This is called roll structure by the paper industry and taper by the converting industry. This concept led to changes in rider roll or lay on roll or nip load programming. The third stage in the evolution was in the 1960s. Here, researchers determined the pressures and tensions inside a roll made a difference in the tendency for certain wound roll defects. The stresses could, for the first time, be crudely calculated and measured. The fourth stage of evolution was in the 1990s, where the first quantitative failure theories emerged. Prior to this, we could predict stresses, but so what if the inner layer pressure was 10 bar? Is 10 bar too high, too low, just right, or doesn't it even make a difference for the problem that we are working on at this moment? Now we know, at least for some defects, now theory becomes practical. What we have done since is add more and better failure theories to our winding models. To calculate stresses in a wound row, we need equations that the model requires, as given here. The equilibrium equation is nothing more than Newton's law. It may look different than what you are used to because it is written in cylindrical coordinates. Perhaps the only point to make here is that Newton has proven himself to be pretty trustworthy in this regard. However, an exception was found by Einstein. The equation here is only good to speed somewhat less than the speed of light. So for those of you who are considering really, really, really fast winding, we have to add a couple more terms to the above equation to make it more accurate. The second equations are called the strain displacement equations. In layman's terms, it means that two layers cannot occupy the same space at the same time, nor can there be any gaps. While you might have gaps in your row, it's unlikely that two wraps will be in the same location unless you have a really bad transporter malfunction. The next equation says that materials are springy. The next two equations say that when you stretch a material, it gets thinner. The first of two boundary conditions at the core is not terribly influential because most cars are so much stiffer than the wound roll that they act infinitely stiff. The second of the two boundary conditions at the current outer wrap is super important. That is, how tight are you winding? This is a complicated combination of net result of tension, nip, torque, 
in speed. In science terms, this is wound in tension, but in layman's terms, it is simply tightness. However, no insight whatsoever is offered by any or all of these winding equations. That is because we don't know what the stresses are until they are incorporated into an accretion model running on a winder. However, you are very unlikely to ever use winding models because they require handcrafted models, only two of which are commercial. You would also need to develop special tests for a couple of the odd material properties that are necessary inputs, as well as to measure stresses to check those models. So you are probably asking, why bother with all that? The answer is that while you will not likely run a winding model, you must know about the results because they teach you about winding defects. For example, the pressure between the layers can predict a wide variety of defects, such as blocking bulk loss in one of the most common types of telescopes. The pressure between the layers from the core to the outside is always high, medium, low. Highest at the core, medium in the middle, lowest, or actually zero, at the outside of the row. High, medium, low, or S-shape for every material, every winder, and every winder setting. That's all you need to know about inner layer pressure. The MD tension inside a wound row can easily explain why starring results. Here, the tension at the current outside of the roll is the wound in tension. However, just beneath that top, you will find that the tension is less. That is because the pressures of the layers above it causes the roll to collapse slightly. That moves layers underneath towards compression. Further down into the roll, there is less and less tension. And, very quickly, the layers are likely to be in machine direction compression. Remember, all you need to know about inner layer pressure is high, medium, low. High, medium, low as you wind the roll. High, medium, low as you unwind the roll. High, medium, low for tight rolls. High, medium, low for loose rolls. High, medium, low for taper wind. High, medium, low for constant wind. High, medium, low for bulky webs. High, medium, low for stiff webs. High, medium, low for almost any core. Pretty boring for the most part. Pressure is simply high, medium, low. The one not at all boring exception occurs not so much in the ZD, but rather in the MD. What happens if you wind with an upset in the tightness into your wound roll? You create a weak spot. Roll structure, tight to start, looser at the finish, but most important may be a smooth transition from start to finish. That avoids the weak spot. Yes, winding can be complicated but the results are well known and documented. Many or most other web handling models are equally complicated. So most of us should only learn what these models teach us about the, how the world works so that we can make a complete and correct remedy list for the problem we are working on rather than know how to derive or use them. If you do want to learn more, documentation is available from two sources. The first is the free Roysum Library database, and that will allow you to search web handling literature far better than Google. The second is all the conference proceedings of the International Web Handling Conferences and all the Web Handling Research Center's Master's and PhD theses. These are also available for free at the site below. Thus, 
We now see how some equations are simple and some are not so simple. However, all have something to teach us about web handling issues that we face every day. This ends for now our tour of equations. Stay tuned for next week when we will return to the ever popular War Stories series, but this time about stories that have a very happy ending. If you have a topic you would like to hear about, let me know in the comment section below. If you found anything interesting or useful here, please like and share and subscribe. Also, be sure to check out the show notes for bonus and surprise material. See you next time.